It almost feels like an endless search, but I believe one has to make a huge deal about seeking help, because you are a big deal. Teachers of Reddit, when can you tell if a student is going through depression or self-loathing? If so, what do you try to do to help? I used to work in schools and I have to say that I always saw the kids I knew needed help as often as I could. They were the kids who didn't have supplies, didn't turn in work, had unreachable parents, were quiet, got bullied etc. Essentially not thriving. In a year of substituting, the biggest thing I've learned is this. If a student doesn't seem right, they aren't. If you ever think to yourself, huh, that's a strange thing to say. Huh, that's not normal for that age group. It's because it isn't. My first week a fifth grade boy said to me, you look like my stepdad, I'm a giant burly, bearded man, but you don't seem mean like him. Are you going to stick around? My heart broke. I excused myself and had the special ed aide look over my class while I went directly to the counselors. Any change in behavior. Usually personal hygiene, attendance, level of interaction. But honestly, as a once extremely suicidal grad student, it was surprising how little people noticed. I showed up for work for barely four to five hours, I was quite a bit withdrawn, but I also overcompensated. Sometimes I'd make an effort to dress nicely, be more cheerful because I didn't want anyone to see what was really going on. I'd hang around till almost midnight to make up for lost hours. Depressed behavior is often contradictory. There's no one way to predict, some people withdraw, some people throw themselves into things further in an effort to distract. You are seeing them for a few hours a day, it is hard to tell what's going in their life. That's why any change from baseline is important doesn't matter which direction it moves in. For me, it didn't end well. I'm still alive and I suppose that's good. I don't know if this belongs here, but I'm going to put it here anyway because it's important in discussions like this. Depression does not mean quiet and reserved. It can mean a variety of symptoms. When I was dealing with depression, I became more outgoing and loud, cracking jokes and trying to get people to talk to me. And, whenever someone shut me down, I took it harder than the average extrovert, I'm extremely introverted. Saying, look for the quiet kid, isn't always helpful. I personally had a two-year period of depression that wasn't characterized by isolation. While depression can certainly manifest as quietness, keeping that narrow-mindedness is hurting the people who are suffering but trying to keep a brave face. This will probably get buried, but I was actually dealing with this today. I have had a freshman, 15 years old, in my class all year that is super quiet and withdrawn most of the time, but occasionally will contribute the most insightful, well thought out, knowledgeable responses in class. He clearly understands the content, but spends 75% of the class sleeping or tuning out. Early on, I noticed that he was clearly bright but not engaging, so I continued to check in with him. He mostly stayed withdrawn, and when I asked him what was going on, he would just shrug. I reached out to home and received no response, and continued checking in with him one-on-one -on -one getting the same shrug. This past week there were parent-teacher conferences, and he came in by himself, which a lot of kids end up doing due to parent work schedules. We chatted again, and when I asked him how he was doing, he said, well, dot you remember what it was like to be 15, which was the most detailed response I had gotten from him. I told him I had and shared that I had gone through some pretty severed anxiety and depression and didn't receive help until my 20s, and that I wish I had reached out sooner. I then shared with him that we have counseling services on our campus and asked if he wanted me to make an appointment for him, and he said okay, which honestly feels like a huge victory. I try to get to know each of my kids, and the biggest way I do that is simply by asking them how they are doing each day. Many simply respond with, fine, but occasionally they will offer something more vulnerable. I guess to really respond to your question, I look for what I know and remember, and I try to support them the best I can. I've been teaching high school for 13 years. In that time, we've lost about a student a year on average, and about half of those have been suicides. After one particularly impactful student's passing, I made it my personal mission to form a personal connection with every one of my students. 
You can tell a student is going through depression or self-loathing the same way you're able to tell when a friend of yours is going through those same feelings, students are people after all. Oftentimes, attendance drops, attention to self-care tapers off, and they start to withdraw. They'll stop raising their hand and doing their assignments and sleep through class more and more. When that happens, I try to pull kids aside and say, hey, I've noticed that you seem like you're going through something. You're not alone. I'm here for you and I care about you. Some kids will deny anything is going on, some will burst into tears and reach out for a hug, some will set an appointment to come in and talk later. I also let them know about the support groups we have on campus and ask if they're interested. Sometimes I call home, sometimes I don't, I feel out the situation and decide from there. I'll also try to put that student in a group with my more mature students. Not the overly positive ones, but the most level-headed just so that there's some consistency in their life. Most importantly, I try to say every single one of my students' names every day in a positive way. I want to talk to every single kid every single period, even if it's just a, hey, I love your new shoes. I pay special attention to the kids I know are going through something. It's a delicate balance, I want them to know that I am paying special attention to them, but I don't want everyone else to know that I'm doing anything different. So acknowledging all kids this way allows me to spend just a minute or two longer with the ones who really need it without them getting labeled as teachers' pets. This part of my job is by far the hardest. I wish I could unburden my kiddos. My general ed psychology professor is some fancy head of the psychology department in our school. She handed around flyers, papers to our college's student health center, and spent about 30 minutes talking to all approximately 100 of us in our huge lecture hall about mental health. She mentioned the procedures, such as how it's basically like asking for advice, and it's not a scary place. She mentioned how, when you get sick, you don't say you're diseased. When you break your finger, you don't call yourself disabled. When you go to your doctor for a checkup, you're not always sick, sometimes you're just getting checked in. She mentioned how seeking mental help, OR seeking mental evaluation can both just be that, mental, checkups, for yourself. And, for those who felt guilty about their mental illness, it doesn't mean to negatively generalize your whole self as negatively ill or broken. She basically made everyone feel human, and sometimes our brain, head, or body gets sick sometimes. She kept mentioning how our college's mental health services are all free if you're a student. And how everyone in that room qualifies for it. She asked everyone, who's interested in going, and, who plans to go, and few students raised their hands in relief. I was already debating to go because of my mental struggles, but hesitated every time I passed by that student health area for about a year. The paper she gave us mentioned how we can call or just walk in. The paper even mentioned how it doesn't have to be about stress, just about how to help shape us for healthier mental lives. It mentioned confidentiality, and a place where one doesn't have to feel ashamed of their illness or struggles. This happened about a week ago, so I'm still a little emotional by writing this, so my words might be a little everywhere. Either way, I'm still too afraid to go to the health building in person, but I have been seeking professional online resources, support now. It's a small step, and I know people have to push themselves to get better, like still getting a shot, despite being afraid, but just hearing this professor open arms and remove some fears really relieved some doubts and fear about seeking help. Small edit, she also made a big deal about always asking and seeking for help, despite if it's asking a teacher, manager, boss, parent, friend, etc. until you get help. She said to keep seeking until you get the help you need. I have high respect for her. One thing I would personally add, is to keep note of things that do and don't work. If a parent helping you isn't enough, take note of that. Seek, ask more. If a teacher isn't helping, seek, ask more, possibly a professional. If a specific professional doesn't help, seek a different one, type. It almost feels like an endless search, but I believe one has to make a huge deal about seeking help, because you are a big deal. Like and subscribe, for more funny, interesting, and scary r slash ask reddit videos.